Grace and peace to you in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to worship on this Pentecost Sunday. We're glad you're here. Welcome to worship in the expanded community of First Presbyterian Church San Anselmo. We say expanded community every Sunday as a reminder that we're worshiping not only here in this place, in this room, but also with our siblings in Christ online who are up and down the West Coast and across the country. On Pentecost Sunday, we get an even broader glimpse, an even broader glimpse of this expansive community Good morning, how are you? Good to see you. Um, This expansive community, um, remembering that in that room, um, as they gathered there in the days after Easter, after Jesus had ascended into heaven, there was the sound as of a mighty wind and there were tongues of fire. And what happened there, the coming of the Spirit on them and in them uh, began to radiate out, radiate from that room out into the streets, Um, across continents, across oceans, down through the generations from those first moments so long ago, all the way down to us, where we gather here in this space, in these spaces, and the Holy Spirit moves, even as people all around the planet are celebrating Pentecost together. Friends, this is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's worship God. And Lindsay's going to lead us in our call to worship. As we gather in the body of Christ, please join me in the call to prayer. On the day of Pentecost, they were all gathered together here. We are all gathered together here. The Spirit came upon them in power. Come, Holy Spirit. The Spirit came upon them with a living word. Come, Holy Spirit. They could understand and they were understood. Come, Holy Spirit. The Spirit came with a dream to dream. Come, Holy Spirit. And a vision to embody. Come, Holy Spirit. By the Spirit of the by the power of the Spirit of Christ, come, let us worship. Come, let's worship God and let's rise in body or in spirit as we sing together our opening hymn number 407, Spirit Divine, attend our prayer.
please join me in prayer as we confess our need for God. Creator Spirit, wellspring of our lives, as the refreshing rains fall on the just and just of the Lord, refresh us with your mercy, who knows our own injustice. As the stream flows steadily on, we find the odds of storm. Please join me as we affirm God's abounding grace. From the beginning, the Spirit has hovered over all creation, creating and recreating all that is. In our deepest need, the Spirit prays for us in groans too deep for words. And in the power of Pentecost, the Spirit challenges and enlivens us to live the life of Christ. By the power of the Spirit in the risen Christ, we are forgiven, loved, and set free. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. Alleluia. Amen. And in that assurance of God's grace, this is the time in worship where we exchange signs of peace with each other. The first thing we'll do is uh, the tech team will put the camera on the congregation. No? There we go. And we'll wave peace to our siblings in Christ online. And if you're online in just a moment, you'll be able to unmute your microphone so that you can exchange words of peace there with each other as we do the same thing in this room. Friends, may the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Good morning. Peace be with you, Good morning. Peace be with you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. 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 I wish I were here. I wish I could be two places at once. <laughs> I am in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Wow. It is beautiful here. I'm here for a conference. Um, Where is he? I don't see him. I had to, oh, I don't know. I haven't heard him yet. What I heard was college students graduating. Mm. Last... <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in a very busy uh, part of town, and it's an old hotel. And did they keep you awake? I put my earplugs in. I give up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that works. It does. It does, yes. Hi, Nancy. Hi there, mate. How are you, Mary Catherine? Yeah. I'm okay. I ended up having to have surgery on my knee. So, um, yeah, so I'm healing. Good. That's all. Once you get past surgery, you're always up, right? When you come out of that. <laughs> it's it's the it's yes, right. It, it, uh, it can't can't but get better from there, right? <laughs> it hurts more before it gets better, but <laughs> absolutely, yeah. Thank you. I'm glad for you. Oh yeah, it's fun to have a broken kneecap. Um, just take care of your knees, right? Yeah, that's right. right. Good morning, everyone. We're arriving late. It's Beth. Hi, Beth. Good morning, Beverly. Good to see you. Peace be with you, Beth. Peace be with all of you. And she says, panting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
worship where we're led by our children. So this time is especially for you, Everett, Anders, June, Cece, Paula, Sheha, Shihu, Shira, Phoebe, Quentin, Hannah, Olivia, Elle, Ashley, whether you are a child or a child at heart, whether you're in this room, in this very room, or whether you're worshiping uh, with us at home, this time is for you. There is a place for you here. So friends, why don't we stand up? This is more a stand up and move around children's time. And then everybody can see what we're wearing. Look at this. Everybody got the memo. We're wearing Pentecost colors. That's excellent. So let's come over here by the table. Um, if you remember Pentecost, Pentecost is the story where they're all, it's the story of the Holy Spirit. And they're all gathered in this room. And all of a sudden they see uh, Fire, there's a mighty wind and tongues as of fire, so it's kind of a, I know, falling on their heads. Excellent. Somebody knows his Bible. Good job. High five. That's excellent. So, you know, you can't, I, that's excellent. Excellent. So, um, you know, so it's, it's, if you can picture it, picture that in your mind's eye. I think parts of it are easy to picture. I think it's easy for us to picture what the flame look like. So look at this. You know, let's see if I can get this lit. You know, so we know what, we always want to be careful. We always want to be careful with that. But we know what, we know what a flame looks like. And we know what a flame um, does for us. We know that the flame, it burns. It warms us up. You know, it warms us up. It gives... It makes rock. Yes, and it, it, it um, also makes light if it's dark so that we can see better. And sometimes in worship, we put this out here, a white candle... And it remind, we call it the Christ candle, so it reminds us of Christ. There are other things here that remind us of what flames look like. You see my stole here and Reverend Grace's stole? And you all are wearing the colors of flames. You're wearing yellow and orange. And look at those flowers over there. They even look like flames kind of shooting up. There's blue. they got all the rainbow colors in there. But the thing that I couldn't figure out is what wind looks like. Wind. Wind. What is, it just blows, yeah. So it blows, so let's do that. We can think of what it sounds like. Everybody blow. Yeah, and it's got movement. It's got movement, so, um, so maybe the choir can help us out. Choir, if you're comfortable standing, I invite you to stand, and we'll think what that movement might look like, the movement of wind. Let's do this. There we go, oh my gosh. Look at that. And there may be sound. I hear a whoosh from the choir. The choir's doing the soundtrack. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Yeah. So we get that idea, but I don't know. You know, they're in this room, and it must have been something really unusual and something special that they could see. I think it would be something, maybe something like this. Yeah. Something that really said that this day, this day is special. This day is special. So, guess what? You're going to have Pentecost bubbles after church. After worship, you will get your own bubbles that you can blow outside as part of our celebration of worship. So, you got to do, we're going to do three things. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to lead everybody in the pretzel prayer. And you're going you're gonna to run to get to, as you usually do, to get to Sunday school. And you're going to do Sunday school. I'll blow the candle out before we're done. You can blow the candle out. That's right. There you go. Go ahead. And then after church, after Sunday school, you're going to get Pentecost bubbles. Does that sound good? Okay. So let's, let's do the pretzel prayer. Anybody want to serve? Yep. No head starts. Any? Sure. God, I love you. God, I love you. Help me to love others. Help me to love others. As you love me. As you love me. Amen. Glasses and a microphone sometimes don't work so well. Okay, reset a bit on the images we just talked about because the sermon is not about the spirit as bubbles. <laughs> We're going, to talk, we're going to talk seriously about the Spirit because in, in the Pentecost story, the Spirit is the sound of a mighty wind. Um, it really was shaking them up. Um, and also as 
uh, a crown of flame rested on everyone's head. So this scripture that Lindsay will read, she'll read the first part, the choir will sing a spirit song, and she'll read the second part. Just take it in. It's this familiar text, but it is so full of imagery. Um, it is a sensory text. So what do, you, what do you see? What do you hear? What do you sense? What do you feel in your body as you hear this Pentecost text read? Our first scripture reading this morning is the Pentecost story from Acts 2, verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a, a, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at the sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all, those, all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? off in our scripture reading, we were in verse 12. Everyone was amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, 
People of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters, all your children, shall prophesy, and your youth shall see visions, and your elders shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, those who are men, women, all genders, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show you portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of God's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of God shall be saved. We celebrate the written word of scripture. Thanks be to God. We celebrate the living word, Christ among us. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Come, Holy Spirit, breathe into us that drawing near to your word, we might see visions and dream dreams and be changed for good. Amen. In the broad sweep of Scripture, we meet the Spirit of God in the very beginning in Genesis 1, verse 2, as the Spirit of God, the breath of God, a mighty wind broods over the surface of the primordial waters. God's breath, God's Spirit is there moving and breathing, creating in the very beginning. Cole Arthur Riley, in her book, This Here Flesh, describes the story like this. Long, long ago, when all the earth was still as silence, the moon got all choked up on the beauty of the stars. She coughed, and then wind was born. The wind rushed out with such a force she didn't even know where she came from at all. She started roaming and searching, darting through trees and trying to wrap herself around anything she could find. No matter what she did, it was as if she was invisible. She wanted to rest in something, but no place would have her. Whenever she became really desperate, she would rend herself into cold and hot air and collide with herself. This, of course, made a tornado of her. So she would thrash through places with an ugliness, picking everything up and forcing it to be held by her, even if just for a little while. Until one day, God was in the garden making something like their own image, and they saw her, and their heart went out to her. And so God inhaled a little bit of her and blew it right into the breast of the image. The wind went on searching and remains very lonely to this day. Only every once in a while, when she passes by a human creature, when she caresses a cheek on a summer day, the wind God put in you and me will stir and recognize herself for a moment. And those tiny moments of being seen, of being felt, collect like a hope in her, carrying her through her loneliness to this day. And Cole Arthur Riley sums all that up by saying, we are made for belonging. When Pentecost morning dawns, there is still an ache in the world. Those who have followed Jesus begin that Pentecost day in the loneliness of loss yet again. They have lost Jesus to death once before, but on the third day there was resurrection and now they've experienced the risen Christ together again, walking dusty roads with Jesus, talking, learning, breaking bread, 
But as the book of Acts opens, Jesus leaves them again. Jesus ascends into heaven with the cryptic instruction, wait here for the gift God has promised. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. They see him go. They're left alone and they wait. On the day of Pentecost, they all gather in one place together again in the loneliness of loss and suddenly there is a sound like the blowing of a mighty wind from heaven and it fills the whole house. And maybe, maybe they remember the mighty wind in the creation story sweeping over all that is or maybe, maybe they're too scared, maybe they're too terrified to remember how God breathed God's mighty breath into humanity. Maybe they're too be bewildered even to remember just a few days ago when they experienced Experience the warm breath of the risen Christ on their flesh. Here they are all together as the house quakes and creaks filled with the sound of a mighty wind from heaven. There is a mighty wind and there is a flame. Tongues as of fire descend upon each one of them, everyone, and all of them, everyone is filled with the Holy Spirit, this holy breath, this mighty wind, as tongues of flame come and rest upon them. I wonder if they remembered all the times in Scripture when God's presence is signified by flame. God speaks to Moses out of a burning bush. God leads the people through the wilderness in a pillar of fire. But what, what to make of a flame that comes and rests on each and all? Until recently, when I would imagine this Pentecost moment, when I would picture it in my mind's eye, I would see tongues of flame shooting down from heaven like some terrifying blowtorch. But then one day last year, I googled artwork for Pentecost, and I found this. Inquire, you may want to twist your head and take a look. Now, the Pentecost story does say that the flame came to rest on each and every one of them. Here it is in this Renaissance painting. And here it is, painted on a fresco. These are just two of a number of painting likes this with, with the little flame resting on their head. Now, I didn't think much about it, except that it's a little odd. It wasn't how I had pictured this. These flames perched on human heads like a candle or like a crown. I didn't think much of it, that is, until a few weeks ago. I was talking with Herman, we were talking about the Pentecost story, and he showed me this coin. Now you've gotta look carefully. This coin has an image of the emperor, Augustus Caesar, and then there right above his head is a star embraced by flame. Herman explained that this is called a supercephalic flame, super meaning above, cephalus meaning head. On this coin, this supercephalic flame is an imperial claim of divinity. With something like it recounted in Virgil's Aeneid, the flame is a sign of being crowned with divinity. So we have this coin and we have Pentecost. Justo Gonzalez talks about the leveling spirit of Pentecost as everyone is included, everyone filled with the spirit. The power of the day is spread out to everyone. What has been vertical, even the power of hierarchy is made horizontal. Yes, I do not disagree with that, but there is more than just that. There is a leveling, but there also is a lifting up. The risen Christ has ascended into heaven, a mighty wind and tongues as a fire descend, and those gathered at Pentecost are crowned with flame. They are raised up, they are enthroned with Christ. They are, we are. And then look what happens next. The world breaks open. All of a sudden, we're no longer in the house, but out in an open space where people from all around the known world hear the sound and come flowing in. And then added to the sound of the mighty wind, there are voices, lots of voices, speaking lots of languages, people speaking in languages not their own, and everyone hearing and understanding with all this swirling around them, the people are amazed and bewildered, and they ask, what can this mean? Margaret Atwood says, 
it's hard to make sense of a story when you're in the middle of it while it's still unfolding. She says, when you're in the middle of the story, it really isn't a story at all, but only a confusion. A dark roaring, a blindness, a wreckage of shattered glass and splintered wood like a house in a whirlwind or else a boat crushed by the icebergs or swept over the rapids and all aboard powerless to stop it. And maybe the folks here felt like that. Their world is swirling with a mighty wind and tongues as a fire with bewildering comprehension in what should be a cacophony of language and words. When you're in the middle of the story, it is but a confusion. We know our own often inexplicable swirling world with tornadoes and superstorms that give voice to climate unraveling and confront us with the damage we have done. We know the confounding complexity of the systems we inhabit as we seek connection in a confining world. We see the inexplicable violence of the world in both new and age-old struggles that rattle on and on down through the generations. Margaret Atwood says, when you're in the midst of a story, it is but a confusion. What does this mean? But she goes on and says, it's only afterwards. Only afterwards that it becomes anything like a story at all when you are telling it to yourself or to someone else. In the swirl of Pentecost, Peter steps in and starts to make meaning of this story, this tale of wind and flame. This is what God said, remember? I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, on all people of every race and gender and nation. Your youth will have visions and your elders will dream dreams. There will be signs and wonders. All this is all that. It's what God said. And because we've been reading ahead in the book of Acts these past seven weeks, we know what flows out from all this. The connection that they experience on the day of Pentecost becomes community, community that shares what they have and gives as anyone has need. They find the healing touch of Christ in their own outstretched hands and as they continue to contend with what all this might mean they experience the inexorable outward reach of the spirit this mighty wind rippling out in ever expanding circles of embrace this is a tale of wind and flame a story of wind and flame that becomes flesh and bones before our very eyes and ears one, it is one that we can touch and taste and experience in our very bodies, where the day of Pentecost begins in lonely, the loneliness of loss and separation. In this mighty wind and these crowns of flame, we see connection, God and us, us and us. No separation, a leveling of power over, a lifting up of all we are, and a radiating out so that no one, no one is left out. On that day of Pentecost, they were all together and they experienced a mighty wind. And they started in the confusion to make meaning of it all. Maybe, maybe it was the wind that had hovered over the earth at creation. The wind that has sped around the earth ever since, bringing breath to all that lives, carrying seeds that find their place in fertile soil, bringing more life, more air, more breath. Maybe it was a mistral or a sirocco, one of those summer or summer, spring or summer winds that comes on its own, comes in its own season to remind us of the turning of the earth. Maybe it was the wind, the breath that God had breathed into creation, into humankind, into the image of God, or the breath Christ had breathed on the disciples huddled in that upper room saying, peace be with you. Maybe it was the breath of God. Maybe it is the breath of God as God draws near to whisper in our ear, you are my beloved. Abide in me and I will abide in you. On that day of Pentecost, they experience a mighty wind and a flame kindles within them, a spark of divinity crowning them fully human, and they come to life, the body of Christ, the fullness of our humanity, rising to greet and embrace and bless this new day. When Cole Arthur Riley tells the story of the mighty wind at creation, she concludes we are made for belonging. Yes, 
Yes, in the swirl of Pentecost, that's what we see. In the swirl of Pentecost with its mighty wind and tongues of fire and symphony of language and understanding in the brooding spirit and the warm breath of the risen Christ, in the sharing and generosity of community, the breaking of bread, the outstretched hand, the ever-expanding embrace, in the longing for connection in a confining world, the longing for peace in a world of war, the longing for healing for every hurt, in the breathing in and the breathing out, in one body, in these bodies, in the swirl of all this, this is what we see. We are made for belonging. We are made for all this. And I love that the spirit, the spirit we carry with us in our breath, one of the few things maybe along with our heartbeat that is with us every moment, um, every moment that we live. So as we begin in prayer, let's just take a moment to settle in with our breath. Take a deep breath in and out. In and out, in and out. The Spirit of God breathing in us. Friends, let's pray. We'll begin our prayer in song and then silence and then spoken words.
Spirit of the living God, present with us now, you hovered over the waters at creation. You breathe life into all that lives. You accompany your people in every moment of every day. In our deepest need, you pray with us in groans too deep for words. And in Pentecost, you draw us together and fill us with power to live lives for you. In our shared experience of your presence in the midst of us, we know that we are made for belonging and we give you thanks and praise. Spirit of the living God present with us now, enliven us to participate in your good news for the poor and for all who are in need. Help us help you provide shelter for those who are unhoused, food for all who are hungry, and to reorder our world so that everyone has enough. Enliven us to proclaim release to the captive and freedom to all who are oppressed. We pray for an end to all systems of oppression and especially for an end to systemic racism. Open our hearts to hear and follow the voices of those who have been harmed the most, to listen for their solutions and their leadership. Open our awareness to see the ways that we participate in harm to stop and to dismantle and rebuild systems and structures so that all may live free. Enliven us to bring your healing touch to the world and to bind up the brokenhearted. We pray for healing for all who are ailing in body or in spirit. Healing for the earth in climate emergency. Healing and comfort for all who mourn. Healing and peace for those who are suffering in Gaza and particularly for those crowded into Rafah. We pray for an immediate and permanent ceasefire, for a return of hostages, and for peace that brings justice. Spirit of the living God, present with us now in this moment, in our moment, fill us with your spirit that we might see visions and dream dreams and live lives that embody your love for the whole wide world. In connection with all creation, We join our voices with the voices of all who have ever called your name, praying the prayer that Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Again, welcome on this Pentecost Sunday. We're so glad you're here. A special welcome to anyone who's visiting with us for the first time or one of your first times. If you're here in this room, we hope that you'll have the chance, that we'll have the chance to get to know you. We've got coffee hour over in Duncan Hall just across the patio um, right after worship, so we hope you'll join us there. And if you're online, uh, we'd love to get to know you too. You can just leave your email address in the chat or you can email me at scottclark at togetherweserve.org and we'll be in touch. Um, as we move into this week, I want to let you know that I'm going to be gone on vacation for a couple of weeks, uh, starting next Sunday, but don't worry, you are in good hands. If, if there are any pastoral issues that come up, you can contact Martha or Reverend Grace, and your guest preachers are known to you. Next Sunday, uh, Nick Morris uh, will be preaching, and then on June 2nd, the Reverend Beverly Brewster will be preaching, so you'll have, you'll have some good worship uh, to look forward to. And then the Sunday after that is the choir service. Um, And then after that, we kind of move into our summer and to give you a preview of coming attractions. You know, June, I've realized, uh, has a lot going on in our civic life. We have Juneteenth, uh, we have Pride, we have July 4th. So we'll think about um, some qualities of community. And over those four weeks, we'll, we'll think about some big topics. We'll think about equality and friendship and citizenship and sovereignty. 
So we'll hit some four, four big things, four big topics. And then after that, for the remainder of the Sunday, what, what I'm planning to do is we'll experience different scriptures, um, each of which is some type of courtroom scene in the Bible. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to have a little fun and look at the many different kinds of courtroom scenes in, this, in scripture. But that's what's coming ahead most immediately, though. Danielle is going to come and tell us about a, a concert that, of Marin Baroque, right? Is it? That's coming up. There you Thank go. You. Yeah. Good morning. I uh, just want to let you know that uh, next Saturday, Marin Baroque is performing here a uh, music uh, by Bach and Vivaldi, um, Brandenburg Concerto Number no. 5, uh, with the one that solos the violin, the flute, and the harpsichord, um, a piece by Vivaldi uh, with a contralto Sarah Cowden. If you came to the last concert of Marin Baroque, she did a piece uh, called Nisi Dominus by Vivaldi. This is a sister piece. She's a fantastic uh, singer, I recommend you to uh, see how she performed. And we will finish the concert with the uh, Bach Cantata 131, Auster Tiefen, which translates uh, uh, the Psalm de Profundis. So, uh, and more music is coming the following week, so stay in touch. Thank you. And the choir service, thank you, Danielle. The choir service, is at the Sunrise Mass? Is that what you all are doing? The Sunrise Mass on June 9th, June 9th. Over the course of this week, we'll have plenty of our regular opportunities to be together. In, uh, we'll have our opportunities to be together in prayer, in connection, our transition support group, our Thursday prayer group, uh, centering prayer, our exercise group, and our book group that meets on Mondays. I'm not sure if they're meeting. I know that Erica is, is out of town. Um, and, and then beyond that, we have opportunities to be together in our justice work, our anti-racist work that um, involves lately uh, partnering with our neighbors in Marin City and the work of IPMN, uh, MIC, and the Canal Alliance. In addition to our justice work and the times we gather for community, we also share our resources. And in just a moment, we'll take up an offering, our weekly offering. In addition to sharing your regular offerings and pledges, you know, we always remember our sensibility offering. You can designate part of it to go to help hunger action. And our deacons offering, you can designate part of what you give to go and help individual needs that arise within the community. But also today, as Royce explained last Sunday, um, we, we participate in a, a nationwide, a denomination-wide Pentecost offering. So please, please remember that. As we take up our offering, we also pause uh, for uh, an, an intentional time of gratitude. A time each week, hopefully every day, where we pause to think of the things for which we are, to great, are grateful and to offer thanks to God. So as, as you're enjoying uh, the beauty of Natsuko's music as we're receiving the offering, just think of one or two things for which you're grateful. And I invite you to say a prayer of thanks. Friends, we'll now receive our morning offering.
Friends, let's rise in body or spirit to sing our closing hymn. This morning, to close, we're going to sing hymn number 280, Come, O Spirit, Dwell Among Us. And you know, we've got a whole section in the hymnal of uh, songs that deal about the Holy Spirit, and we um, sing them on Pentecost, so this comes around once a year. This is a great hymn. It's got some, some um, triplets that move it forward, but it's sing we're going to sing about some of the things that we've talked about. Come, O Spirit. Dwell among us, come with Pentecostal power, give the church a stronger vision, help us face each crucial hour. Come, O Spirit, dwell among us, give us words of fire and flame. Friends, let's rise in body or spirit and sing this Pentecostal hymn. <laughs> day of Pentecost, they were all gathered together and God breathed into them a mighty spirit and crowned them and us with a flame of divinity. Friends, the body of Christ is rising again, ready to go out into the world. Let's go and love and heal the world God loves so very much. And as we go, know that we go Christ above us, Christ below us, Christ behind us, Christ before us, Christ beside us and all around us, Christ within us. Go in peace.